the U.S. wanted to wanted the G20, the, the Financial Stability Board, to discuss specifically, you know, the role of tax havens, um, and the EU had been putting pressure on Switzerland, on Singapore, and Hong Kong, um, you know, to um, to be more open with customer information and stuff like that. Do you face some of those challenges? Uh, are they are they real to Dubai as an offshore center? To be honest, I don't think they are. I mean. I saw a lot of countries being almost branded as, as being bad players in the market. I mean, Hong Kong um, as being a place where you shouldn't be able to do business because it's not open and not transparent. I mean, it, to me, lunacy. Um, this was not very sensible. This was a, an overreaction to something. Would I say that, that money laundering doesn't take place in various countries around the world and perhaps even in some of those that are supposed to be well regulated? Of course it happens. Um, does it happen in Dubai or Abu Dhabi? I'm sure from time to time. Does it happen in Hong Kong or Singapore? I'm sure from time to time things slip through that nobody notices. But I would have to say, and particularly with the DISC, um, it would be very hard for somebody to slip something through the net that wasn't picked up. But sometimes it's not the DIFC. It might be the onshore part of the Dubai financial system. Um, you know, do you see a dichotomy in terms of the standards being applied on DIFC as opposed to the domestic institutions? I think one of the good things about the DIFC is because it started off at the very top end of regulations and setting of standards, I think it's had the beneficial effect of, of making people sit up and say, well, shouldn't we actually be doing that? We're being criticized. And now we've got a model that we can follow. So I think that it's been helpful. Uh, and I also think that the quality of the, the central bank in the UAE, I mean, that, that has consistently improved. Um, to bring it, I think, up to levels that should be of world standard. How important is Islamic finance to the DIFC? Um, is that um, you know, an area that you want to see a critical mass developing over time? You know, there's a lot of debate that goes on about Islamic finance. Um, and it, it takes place in Asia as well as it takes place in, in the Middle East. And it doesn't seem to matter where you go at the moment. Everybody's got their own view and everybody seems to have a differing set of standards. I think what we would like to try and create in the DIFC is a set of standards that would appeal to the vast majority of people who want to get involved with Islamic finance. Uh, there are so m some people out there who are absolutely so totally purist about it that you probably wouldn't satisfy 100% of the people who want to do the purest type of Islamic finance. But you will be able to put a, a seal of approval, if you like, on probably 80 or 90% of it. And I think the role that DIFC can do in that is creating the structure uh, that would enable that to happen. Um, but that's, I mean, we're, we're not up against, we, we collaborate, we talk to people like the, the Malaysian Central Bank, mm. for example, mm. um, who as far as Asia is concerned are undoubtedly Probably. the leaders. Right. The interesting thing about the Malaysian approach has been by being, uh, by putting in place common standards just for their own players. They, they've created some form of critical mass in the domestic marketplace, whereas you find that a lot of Islamic sukuks are actually listed in London, in, you know, out of the Middle East. Um, when are they going to bring them home? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. If you speak to most people about where they think the center of Islamic finance is and where it's done, they will tell you, well, it must be Saudi Arabia, it must be Bahrain. Uh, but no, you're right. It's done in London, which seems to suggest that if you have the structure in place, it doesn't matter where they're done. Neither does it matter whether you have a, a Muslim community within that country. Hong Kong has aspirations to have Islamic finance as one of the things that it offers to people who want to, to do sukuks and everything else. No reason why they shouldn't. The critics said, but only 1% of the population in Hong Kong are followers of Islam. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't have to be a Muslim to actually buy an Islamic product. If it suits your portfolio, go and buy it. I don't think there has to be a home for it as such. I think what you need is, is, is a common set of standards as far as you can actually make them. And, uh, so how, what's, the, what's the profile of the asset 
composition of, of, of the VIFC uh, marketplace today? Well, don't forget, we, we as an authority, we authorize people to operate within the DIFC. Right. So what they do around the region, the business that they bring in, uh, doesn't matter to us too much as long as they're doing it properly. Okay. Um, but but still, I'm sure you measure it in some form of a size. Well, we do in terms of, of, well, we're trying to get a better grip on it than we have had in the past, so I'd be reluctant to give you absolute number, numbers. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the players in the market, um, we've got pretty much all of the top hundred banks who are registered. Well, there's a table and a chair, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, there are. Now, there's an interesting comment. Um, it's not just a table and a chair. I mean, these are sort of warm, moving bodies that we have in there. Somebody did say some time ago, well, it doesn't actually matter because they've only got a desk and a chair and there's nobody else there. But if you look at people like Deutsche Bank, you look at people like Standard Chartered, you look at people like HSBC, they've got a lot of people um, actually operating within the DIFC who are based there doing regional business. Yeah, because if you, if you take um, a, a more established financial center like Singapore, it's, you, know, you would use the ACU, the, you know, the, yeah. the, the Asian Currency Unit, to, as, a, as a form of measurement in terms of how big it is. Um, Hong Kong, maybe the capital markets, is really the, the um, it's, a, it's a center for foreign direct investment in, in, the, in, the, in the stock exchange. What about Dubai? How, what would you measure it? Uh, you know, what would you use to measure uh, how big the offshore sector is? Again, hard to put an actual number on it. We would see what profits they are making uh, coming through, or the business that they're booking through the DIFC. Uh, in, for certain of the businesses, we would know what assets under management they've got there. So these are the sort of numbers we would look at. Um, but we are there to facilitate the ability for these financial institutions to do business throughout the region. A number of these countries have aspirations to be a financial center of sorts. Um, what do you think is realistically achievable in today's environment given the different major players around the world? I think if you're going to be a financial center, you, if you, you look at the established ones um, and you think about what they've got, you need an unambiguous legal structure. Uh, one that understands, uh, that, that everybody can understand, and one that practices the law in an international manner that, that everybody is comfortable with. Uh, I think that's the first thing they need. Um, clearly, you need to have the right sort of workforce that is available for those institutions that want to set up their financial centers. You need to have a, a central bank or a structure which allows the products that a financial center, for example, uh, and, and Islamic finance is a particular one because not every jurisdiction in Asia that has aspirations, for example, to, to be an Islamic center uh, don't necessarily have the tax structures in place uh, that they will have to introduce to make it easier to do these structured products in an Islamic manner. Um, if you take Korea, Korea which has aspirations to be uh, a hub, I think because of where it is starting from and um, against the competition that is in its immediate vicinity, mm -hmm. somewhere like Korea needs to focus on doing one or two things where there may be a gap somewhere in the marketplace rather than becoming a fully fledged financial center. Uh, and I think they've been looking recently particularly at the bond markets and, and how they can develop the bond markets uh, to make them an international or at least, at least a regional center, mm -hmm. um, if not international. Um, but, it, but it comes down to people, it comes down to the laws, the, le the legislation in place and, and how easy it is for them to introduce new products. David Alden, thank you very much.